We're overlooking the fact that the Zen already fixed though. Wait, 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 correct. We're overlooking just, that, right? Because yeah, but you can mint Z, you can mint Zen for free, you can distribute it for free. So we we've gotten past that. We've got this is we've gotten past that. So we've got to go to the next step. Okay. So I was saying here just that wasn't the the point where the, it started going all over the place where you were talking about how to bring it into application the exchange now crypto ghost is talking about between us you and i and individual users okay but isn't the point really like we're thinking of how do we bring the the market and the whole infrastructure to us because we can't do that we can't take care of the tech we can't bring the mcdonald's we can't do the mcdonald's and the this and the that and, and make the machines or the tech or the i mean yes, that's not really we what we can we can do that we yeah can. It, it's not how it's going to happen so we have to stay realistic the market will come no out. it is going to happen like that right we're gonna we're gonna you're gonna have to someone is gonna have to go to mcdonald's and say hey you want a zen machine no someone's gonna yes no. that's how it works we're kind of jumping ahead here i mean the whole yeah. idea it, here we're in the yeah. first week and just like jack of hearts said as well we need the proof of participation and all of that other stuff will naturally follow because it will be so prevalent everywhere and it will become natural for as a payment and or so that's as what i was originally saying i said i said everyone i know everyone here isn't just crypto holding that's my point it's like yes we're all doing those first couple of steps we're minting zen we're telling people about zen we're creating some type of way where we can give people zen for free right that is happening right now and and since we believe in zen supposedly that's going to continue happening right now i don't know like a lot of people in here are fickle they may switch to something else and in six months but currently what i'm saying is is this what we're doing is people are mining zen they're staking zen they're telling people about zen they're talking about zen right that's fine come on as a developer don't you go towards those markets aren't those the markets that you're wanting to go isn't that why you're here you represent as a developer you you represent in a sense that side of the of the the whole story of the tech there's exactly. a whole, whole and mm -hmm. them as well it's just that you're a little bit on the front line looking for new products projects are very much involved in crypto but they'll hear mm -hmm. about it and they'll have the same motivation as you have as a developer for those reasons you're right you're right and over time you're going to see more and more people you know figure out solutions and stuff that's what i thought we were here doing now well we're really focused more so on the adoption and and seeing our own vision and and conveying it and sharing it and elaborating on it so that people are clear about it like when people come in here and say oh what's happening with the prices then okay that's an issue because they're not seeing the full picture and we're just trying to show no you don't have to worry about that everything's good you did the good thing if you minted zen and you're you're doing the proof of participation and we've just succeeded already in the first week to be just about all the records and expectations and everything is going super well and the value of zen is pumping like hard but people don't necessarily see that okay so one of my biggest value propositions for zen is just the network in itself and it being able to be something that other projects can be basically advertise too. So we're probably one of the most active communities out there at the moment. Now think of that, what would happen in the bull market where that's like magnified times whoever knows what number. People are probably, and the fact that our project incentivizes creating multiple accounts, other projects are going to want to airdrop us stuff. That's what I think is like one of the biggest things. And when that happens, they could either like take half and create liquidity for us and keep it in the network and build us up too. Or, well, also, people will sell, keep some cash. Maybe they become even on their Zen stuff, even if they are down. And then they could use that money to mint more Zen. That's one of the biggest things. And then that's where that's great I think of like the infinite money printer. They're going to advertise to us because we're one of the biggest networks. We're going to use their coin to sell it and create more Zen, which is going to be like an echo chamber throughout crypto where people are like, oh, if you're in this coin, you're going to get more money because they're going to send you more money. That is a great thing example of a first yeah. you a first instance yeah. of the market coming to us that's the market coming to us right there and it's like mm -hmm. the first case and it's very clear well said yeah and, that, and that's why that's why know. minting right now it has a multiplier it has such a huge multiplier because say you make a hundred and even if you just get like a, a ten dollar airdrop or a fifty dollar airdrop but remember back in the bull market when there was like twelve hundred airdrops three thousand dollar airdrops and that's per wallet address that's Dude, our infinite just, money yeah, printer that is 
beautiful. And Jack exactly. gave me that idea because he was saying exactly. something about people with infinite money. And I was like, wait a minute. And here's the other thing. I know of a project that basically trades NFTs that are loaded with different coins. So like you can put Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge, you could put other NFTs in it. You could put it inside other ones of itself and it, it trades the stuff on chain. So you kind of like create this portfolio of it. And I talked to the creator and because right now he only has it as where it's like you only have like one address for each different type of cryptocurrency. I asked him, I was like, is it possible to like just create multiple addresses for this thing for like Ethereum and like somehow preload it with like a minted Zen term? And he's looking into it. He figured out that you could add the multiple addresses already. Obviously, he'll, he'll just have to create some kind of trustful bot kind of thing and then sell it. Like I could definitely see him selling that service for like two times the cost of gas. So imagine if you just go to this really easy way to like mint like a hundred or a thousand Zen addresses for like maybe double the cost, but you choose like the longest thing. And then yeah, so you're able to trade it. Idea, so that also gives value to all of your wallets because right now you're not able to really trade them. But if you have like this NFT with like a thousand minted, well, plain Zen, but they're not due for like 400 days, maybe on day 200, somebody wants to buy that from you for way more than you it yeah. would cost you to make. That's what I was talking about before. It's like Zen is a perpetual market, right? You can sell Zen from the future. You can sell it from the past. Hey, um, and this is one thing I was thinking about and I wanted to mention, you know, I'm not an artist, but but I was thinking about, you know, setting up like an NFT gallery and pairing all of my NFTs with Zen and just sell them. Hey, if you want to buy my NFTs, I have, you know, have some art. Fantastic. I'm going to just put it on OpenSea and just pair it with Zen. And I would like um, challenge other people to do the same thing. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'll probably Can do I that you, sometime this weekend. Can I give you an idea? Can I give you an idea in addition to that? So imagine, I don't know if you're aware that Zen has a burn, like a proof of burn function where you're allowed to. You're going to do that. Okay, no, it's ahead, okay. Jack. I was going to step I'll in and say go. the same thing. Do it. No, you do it. You go. Go. Mm, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is just use that proof of burn function to where the p only people eligible to buy your NFTs for Zen also have to show that in the address they're buying them with, they've burned X amount of Zen. Yeah, they burned them. So yeah, we talked about this the other day, remember? Yep. So I now you that. add that deflationary the effect. Carrega wasn't hot on that idea, but here's another idea. How about you burn it as the first or one of the first Zen NFTs? Have someone burn it and uh, and buy it back from them. Because if it's a if it's of the first NFTs and you can, you know, you're in the first place, that, that, that NFT can go up. Well, I'm basically saying you can start a, a market of NFT. Like NFTs, they, they don't, they're not necessarily a one-time sell thing, right? They can gain in value. They can be resold for a higher value. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it now. I get you. I get what you're saying. Right? You also right, make but, NFTs okay. that are like bonds where you, you literally attach, like say, a 200-day term Zen Mint to the NFT. So the person buys the NFT and they're incentivized to hold it because it doesn't unlock the, the mechanism in there to, to allow you to, to mint those Zen until the 200 day mark comes up. So they have to, they buy the NFT and you basically pre-created a mint for them that unlocks that. Yeah, day. See, I like that idea. That's what, that's what the other guy was saying too, right? T Steve Vision, y'all both are kind of saying the same thing. That's a pretty good idea. Yeah, I, I know of a project that basically you can put like almost any cryptocurrency in and trade it around like as a portfolio. And now I, I asked the creator to look into this and he, I guess he's already found out a way to add multiple Ethereum addresses. He he only had like one, like one address per like different blockchain. So yeah. we'll see what happens with that. That's a cool idea. How can I get people just to mint free Zen and they just mint the Zen, right? And then they can use it to pay for something, right? But they never pay for any, all they use is the gas. So they mint, they create a mint and then they trade that mint or they trade that mint term for some other goods or services, right? And it's something that's going to come in the future. Maybe they create a seven day mint and then in seven days you'll get paid. But why don't you take the Zen model for your own project? Zen did it for free basically and it had a huge success. So if you offer something for, for almost free, like a burn, uh, yes. or, right? You'll, you'll get the a lot more user traffic and you can start get the ball rolling on something else. If they burn for Zen, for example, they can get the, I mean, they burn for an NFT. They can use that NFT. They could stake it, okay, and couple it with something else in another contract that you make as a developer okay that's the service you have to offer mm -hmm. and then that nft that they burnt now they get to use it coupled with something else and then you get you can make some money if you want and you get the ball rolling but at least you're attracting the community because you're making
making use of the burn function, which is more so charitable to the community because oh. every time you burn, it benefits and all of the users, including the, the burner. Here's another idea <laughs> dropping oh, right. on the right NFT. There. Some people put up their NFT for sale, but some people put them up for auction. And obviously the higher, highest bidder wins. But what if you were to, in an auction format, have a, a fixed price of Zen plus as a condition of the sale, the highest person who bids the highest burn would win. So they would not only, you would get the fixed price of Zen, that would be your cost or, or your reward for selling it. But the person who's willing to burn the most amount of Zen would actually win the auction. Now we're Very talking good. That's, Goose. That's, a that's, that's a great, that's a good, good formula. That's a great formula. It's using the burn incentive. It'll go way higher because it's a burn than if it was just a price and you yeah. get, you, you get your base price. You don't get the full bid because it could go much higher. And on top of it, it brings much higher value to that NFT for any resale because it, it was a charitable NFT. Somebody burned for the whole community and it could give it a certain added value because it was a burn and not just a payment. Well, you know, the idea has come out and then, you know, smarter people than, than me will figure out how to tweak the contract or how to create maybe a different... We can do OpenSea, but maybe we create a separate website for Zen-related NFTs. We can build the, the contracts and the infrastructure and the websites. I think that is... Jack talks about the network effect, but I think here in here, the real power and the real game-changing, world-changing is, is us not only talking about it, which is very important, but having the will to do it. So the, these are the little steps that we do that really take off the engine. I, I refer to it as uh, priming the engine, and here we, we're priming the engine. But once the engine starts to go, there's no stopping it, right? But uh, I, I really like the, uh, the ideas that are, are coming out. Yeah, and as, as I was telling Craig, uh, other developers, as the user base grows and they're going to hear about it, uh, they, they're going to come. They're going to come. I'm not really not worried about that if we keep doing what we're doing and, and you know, getting the user adoption.